Hey, brothers and sisters in YouTube family, hope you guys are being blessed and that you guys are continuing to persevere. Just persevering in these trying times. I can't imagine how difficult it is for you all, especially those in the world in this lockdown. I pray that none of you guys are losing hope, but are staying steadfast and truly being a beacon of hope for others as well. So the Lord gave me this message on April the 18th called The Economy of Grace. <laughs> and I'll begin the night before, actually, where I could not really sleep. Like, I just kept tossing and turning. I feel like I lost my peace for a moment. And when I lose my peace, guys, that means I've walked into pride about something. So that's all that kept popping in my head. Pride, pride, pride. I was like, oh, Lord, <laughs> please help me. Pride is rising up within me. I mean, it's been amazing to see the Lord's faithfulness in these messages. But hearing from him and getting praise from others, that is just all a recipe of pride to rise, guys, for me. So I've been asking Jesus and Blessed Mother to please help me in that area. To not allow any of these things the Lord's doing through me to raise my head or heart in pride. I hate pride, guys. I know Jesus does too. And I shouldn't be fearful of a fall, but I am. Because you know, scripture does say that pride truly sets you up for a fall. And it's funny, guys, because in the beginning of my walk, I ran after the approval of men. I really wanted people to see the Lord working through me. I thought that was my source of identity, but the Lord really crushed that very quickly. <laughs> he allowed no one to recognize the gifts or really approve of me. You see, when I was in the world, my identity was CEO, fashion designer, model, event planner, leader, mogul, which only I proclaimed, but not a child of God. And as the Lord called me to lay all these pursuits down, if I can be honest, I found the same driven nature in the church. In the world, I'd go to networking events. And the first thing everyone asks is always, so what do you do? As if to see how your relationship can benefit them. And when I got around church young adult circles, one of the top questions that continued to keep popping up was, so what are you called to do? Do you know your gifts? What are your gifts? So I began to seek Jesus for my calling and gifts. Then one day I was belittled by a friend who seemed so confident in her call and it cut my heart so deep. So on break, I ran to my car and began to cry as I cried out fervently, asking Jesus to tell me my gifts, that I need to know my gifts so I could stand confidently in him. Then Jesus finally spoke these words in my heart as I was crying. And he said, if you don't know my ways and they're not embedded in your heart, how else are you able to walk in your calling? I was dumbfounded, guys, and so grateful for those words that gave me so much peace, but challenged me, which caused me to begin seeking Jesus for who he was and not what he had called me to do. He gave me the same words again coming here on this mountain through Ray McCard. As I walk with Jesus, I found that when you unite yourself to him, when his presence becomes your sole pursuit, then truly you have all the spiritual blessings, as Paul says in Ephesians 1 through 1 3. Praise be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. So I had to find my identity in the Lord. I'm so grateful for that. Furthermore, for the past year, he's had me hidden, tucked away in his heart in the wilderness, where I've been enjoying his very real presence and love where I was stripped of everything and everyone and seeking no one or nothing else but Jesus. I eventually came to love the hidden life, as he calls it. All things hidden, only for his eyes. So when he started giving these messages and sharing about the mission he had for me, guys, I cried and I cried and trembled in fear because I've come to not really want to be visible or known or anything for that matter. And it was until he gave me the reign of right following me crying in tears <laughs> from the book called Jesus CEO. And Holy Spirit just anointed it to me, so I just felt led in to pick it up. And I opened up to the chapter, and the title said, Jesus was visible. And I went on to say, He always stood out in the crowd. And I was like, Wow, Lord. So it gave me profound peace that He was calling me to this, not me pursuing it. For some of us, He has called us to a hidden life truly a hidden life as the duty of our state that is for many mothers wives children and husbands whose lives are in the background 
where they have great virtue before the eyes of the Lord. Their lives are sweet aroma, sacrifice to the Lord. Their prayers are so powerful. No one would know it. Not even them. Many times they don't know, but all of heaven knows. And there are other souls who he places in the hidden life for some time, which he does with most of us who are called by him. So that our foundation is on him, his love alone, his validation alone, and his will alone. Once we mature in that, he can then entrust us with a visible life because we have cultivated a deep, real deep relationship with him in that secret place during our hidden life. Jesus lived a life of security for 30 years, guys, and only three years of ministry. So if you think about it, God allowed his son to be perfected for that long until his ministry, then how much more us? And guys, I love this scripture because it gives me such a sound foundation on suffering and on obedience and that Jesus had to go through it. And it says in Hebrew 5, 8, it says, although he was a son, he learned obedience by things he suffered. Wow. Even Jesus, being God, made himself no equality to God, that he so humbled himself to be able to learn, to be able to be taught. Jesus had a teachable spirit because he was taught by the Father here on earth that he may be used by him in such a powerful way. So he emptied himself to be taught by the Father. We sometimes forget that Jesus was man, fully man, guys. He was God, but he was fully man. And he did nothing on his own besides what the Father spoke, according to the Father's will. And all the power that flowed through him was through the Father. So it's important that we too humble ourselves and be empty of self that God may use us as he pleases. Truly, there's no reason to be jealous of me because I am what I am by God's grace. Truly, it's all him, every bit of it. Guys, I have so many weaknesses. And as I was thinking of all these things, it came to me on my bed this morning. Why well, should I say Jesus brought it to my mind? Because guys, I woke up and just a laundry list of my weaknesses were playing in my mind. And let me tell you how much of a hot mess I was. So as all these weaknesses were coming to my mind, halfway through, I want to stop it. And I stopped myself thinking, huh, I don't need to share this. And maybe that's not a weakness. I'm not that bad. And I could just hear Holy Spirit say, keep going. And I was like, oh man, Lord. <laughs> so for one, guys, I have a lot of pride wanting my own preference, my own way, thinking my way is best. I'm really bad at that. Please pray for Jesus. I know it can be tough on him. And I can be selfish too as well. And also because I've had a lot of rejection, I'm prone to taking offense easily. And because I'm sensitive, I can easily hold on to offense. I can easily be resentful. I struggle with that. I also struggle with jealousy of others. Yeah, I struggle with that. Spiritual jealousy even. Because I came from a background of finding and seeking my identity and what the Lord did through me rather than his love and blood. So I could tend to compare myself. And it only shows my ingratitude and my lack of contentment who God has called me to be and what I'm not. And I can have self-righteous attitudes. Because the Lord's demands and standards he's put on me, I compare myself to others again, and I, and I could judge quickly, judge them quickly. And my love is still so conditional, guys, so many times. And I am impatient. And I tend to be partial towards those I like or find spiritually attractive. The Lord actually just brought that up, I think, last year. So you know when you connect with someone on a spiritual level, when you meet someone who's not necessarily a kindred spirit, you can be partial towards them because you favor to be around like-minded people. Yes, I am guilty. Oh, and also prone to doing things hastily because of my laziness. Do you know, guys, I didn't even know that about myself until I got to this mountain. That I'm truly a lazy person at heart. In the world, I was a very ambitious dreamer, but lazy. I was a jack of all trades, but a master of none, as my dad would say. <laughs> I did a lot of things, but very sloppy about it. And I'm still prone to that. That's why Jesus is hard on me in that area. And so is Mother Claire. <laughs> I have issues in the past of being dishonest. And I tend to hold my emotions in. So I'm dishonest about how I'm feeling. I'm not being faithful to the words I speak. I can break promises because I talk too much. And rashly without thinking and just want to make someone feel good. 
And I have a compulsive addictive behavior. And it's food. Yep, me and food have an issue. I can just eat compulsively, which continues to feed my flesh and cause me to fall into temptations when I'm supposed to be fasting. And one thing that he's really had me conquer here is fear. I fear suffering, guys, and fear being betrayed again. I fear, rather than loving, which is being confident in God's goodness and whatever he allows. And I'm also insecure as a leader as well. What else? Well, there's so much more you haven't even shown me. I'm telling you guys, I have so many weaknesses. In short, I'm a hot mess. So any good you see in me, I mean any, is Jesus. It's all his grace. At this point, I just said, Lord, do you have anything else to add? And he responded, My beloved, I am pleased with your openness and transparency. That is many times one of the greatest weaknesses of leaders. Many wear masks with those they shepherd, as if they have it all together, and cause many to stumble without knowing it. Many souls compare themselves with those that lead them. And other times, when a leader falls, the facade of perfection is cracked and scandalizes those that follow them. My dear ones, that's why Paul admonished many to boast in their weaknesses, because it is in your weakness that I am made perfect in you. Here he's quoting 2 Corinthians 12. As Jesus continues, Not just by my strength, but every virtue, every divine nature is given to you. When you boast in your weaknesses and know who you are, truly standing before me. You see, the economy of grace is simply emptiness of self, emptiness of all your worth and anything else than me. The more you are weak, the more you draw my strength to you. Do you understand that, my dear ones? This world has taught you complete opposite, that you must have it together, that I help those who help themselves. May I tell you that is men's wisdom? I love weak, little, humble souls, I am drawn to weakness, my dear beloved brides. If you truly understood that, the many would put off their weights that so burdened them and proclaim their weaknesses to the rooftops so that I may run to their aid. It is the humble that graces are given to, to the prideful I resist, because in the pride you need nothing. You have everything. You can do all things, right? No, you will fall time and time again. These lessons must be had in my people because it is through the crushing and the pressing that you realize who you truly are and your need for me. Pride entered through the fall of men and my grace. My grace entered when I humbled myself, emptied myself of my divinity, allowed myself to be taught by my father, crushed by the people I loved, killed on a cross, that grace can flow freely to all those who will follow me to Calvary. So you see, my little ones, my grace is indeed sufficient for you in every trial, every circumstance I allow. It is through the difficult times my grace abounds even more. And it's through the times of your deepest misery that my grace abounds then. So humble yourself before me. Humble yourself before your brothers and sisters. Humble yourself. Boast all that the more in your weaknesses. I know that if I allow goodness to flow in and through you, that is my goodness and my grace, beloved ones. Nothing can be done without my grace. You couldn't walk, talk, think without my grace. So remember that, my dear ones. Grace is not a last license for you to freely do what you desire, but my grace is to sustain you for what I've called you to become. So there's absolutely no good in this little one. Nothing good besides her desire to do my will. No longer measure yourself by the world standards, the church standards, or comparison to your brethren, my beloved ones. But let me be the standard in which you all fall short every single time. So come now, my empty and humble ones, for my grace will abound for you even now. And that was the end of Jesus' message. So I pray that you guys are blessed and encouraged by this message to share your weaknesses. I challenge you, those who listen to this on the comments, maybe be brave for a moment. Be brave and share your weaknesses that others may be encouraged as well. Father, I just thank you so much for these words. May your word go forth and not return void. Oh Lord, please break this stubborn pride within all of us. 
Help us to see ourselves as we truly are before you. And help us to love who we truly are before you and who we're not. Lord, help us to praise you and others. And help us, Lord, for the grace to be little, nothings, nobodies, and be okay with that, Jesus. And help us also, too, <laughs> to trust you, Lord, when you do call us out to be visible. Not trusting in our ability, but trusting that you have called it and you will sustain us, Lord, in these call. And I pray right now, Lord God, that you'd give us the grace to be honest and open about our weaknesses. I pray that you'd truly build your church, your people, that would be like-minded in heart, loving one another, bearing with each other patiently, and open enough, Lord, to take off the mask that we so wear. And truly just be honest with one another and be honest with you, Lord. Help us to be okay with our weaknesses and truly seek you for aid and for help, Lord, in all that we do, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you guys until the next message.